Guys, morning, it's Monday morning. I've narrowed down my watch list. Primarily to these three, Euro New Zealand Dollar, Australian Dollar Swiss, and New Zealand Dollar Swiss. So my favorite is Euro New Zealand Dollar. Beautiful daily, clearly overextended. Dropping into the lower time frames, we've broken below the low. So if we pull back to the 0.382 Fib, then we will look for a short. As you can see, Euro New Zealand Dollar, pulling back nicely to our areas now. So if we start getting some bearish momentum, continue with the daily move to the downside against trend, as I've already mentioned. That's looking nice. New Zealand dollar Swiss is similar, but the opposite way around. So we're looking for buys again. Look how overextended we are. Multiple days, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days overextended to the downside. We're at a key level. So we're looking for a daily directional prediction to the upside. That's my bias. Then when you go onto these lower time frames again, we want to look for a trend change. So we're making higher high, higher low, higher high with change trend. Now we're pulling back to these areas. So if we get some bullish momentum, we'll look for the continuation, which coincides with the daily directional prediction to the upside. So again, similar opportunities. They're the two main things I'm looking at for this week or for today. There's a lot of opportunity this week. The New Zealand dollar uh, Swiss is looking nice. It's still at our area of value. So if we can get a break above and get some bullish momentum come in, hopefully we still get good risk reward. But yeah, this one's still looking nice. Hey guys, we've just entered long on this position now. As you can see, we're rejecting this level. We've got a break above on the five minute, which I, I like. Fantastic risk reward, 2.51, so good risk reward. So overall, good position. Again, like I've been saying all the time, it doesn't matter how this position plays out, this could lose, but everything's perfect. The entry's perfect, the risk reward, 2.5 to one is fantastic. Beautiful high time frames that I look for. So again, the process, not the outcome. I have to execute this trade. If this one individually loses, I know if I keep taking these long term with the risk reward, you're going to be in a good position. You can see on MetaTrader that we have executed this position. So I am actually live into, into the position. Also, quick one, guys. If you get value from these videos, all I ask is please like, comment, and subscribe. If you subscribe, it's going to help these videos get out to more people. We're trying to show a real, true account of what it's like to get funded and trading and a real guy trying to show a real journey, showing all the losses, all the wins. And yes, yeah, important to get this out to as many people as possible to show the real side of what trading is truly like. So I appreciate you guys. Let's get back to the video. So hourly candle's about to close, coming up to four o'clock. Moving in our direction, but we've just got to manage and see how this plays out. So strong hourly rejection of 0.382 guys on the one hour 50. Exactly what we like to see textbook. Doesn't mean it's going to play out. Again, none of this means it's going to play out, but it's what we want to see. A nice rejection of this area for the bullish continuation. It's looking okay, but again, it's about the process, not the outcome. These individual trades can still lose. Everything can be perfect. It could be an A plus setup and they can still lose. So it's important to not focus on the outcome. Have I done everything I needed to do? Was it a good entry? Yes. Has it rejected the level? Yes. Um, is it a good daily time frame? Good entry on the daily, uh, good analysis on the daily time frame? Yes. So everything's perfect. So even if it loses, you can be happy and tick it down as a good trade. Okay hey guys, woke up, have been stopped out of this position for negative 1%. Again, part of probabilities, executed my plan perfectly and that shows that A plus setups can still lose. But yeah, we'll journal this, reflect on this. It's only one trade, busy week ahead and yeah, we'll see what happens to the rest of the week. So this is the point that I want to show with trading guys that a lot of people won't show and they, and you don't realize when you're actually trading, this is what you're going to encounter. As you would have seen, I was forecasting my positions and I was looking at which positions to take. Took the New Zealand dollar Swiss trade and that happened to lose, which is part of probabilities. That's what happens, which again, perfect trade. I went through that yesterday and it was a good setup. But that wasn't a problem because obviously you, you forecast other opportunities and there was lots of opportunities, especially for today, that you can capitalize on. But what ends up happening sometimes is the moves, again, this is a perfect trade similar to the trade yesterday and this one played out. However, I wasn't able to get an entry and it went off and out as it didn't pull back far enough, but it played out to a T. It hit the four hour 50, which is the pullback move target. We broke above the one hour 50, but here was yesterday, so I didn't take that. I was looking at some kind of pullback into this area today. We didn't get that and continued. Perfect daily candle continued in the direction we predicted. Same with this trade, New Zealand dollar CAD, again, the prediction was correct, but we just couldn't enter the market. We didn't get a clean entry. We didn't pull back cleanly. We sort of pulled back a little bit at five in the morning, which I wasn't up. We came up and then we didn't, at, at eight o'clock, we sort of plateaued and then went and went and hit target, which was here. So these are the things you have to be able to deal with psychologically because I'm in a trade 
that lost, that I executed on, that's one of those things. And then you see trades that would have played out. Had I been able to enter, I would have made good profit on that, but I wasn't able to enter because it didn't pull back to the errors and carried on without it. So sometimes psychologically that can affect you because you can feel a bit frustrated because you're down 1% for the week, but you have plenty, two, three opportunities that were perfect trades. Again, predicted the moves perfectly, hit target perfectly but we're just not able to enter. So we weren't able to capitalize on that move. So you have to be able to deal with those emotions, be able to sit there and think, okay, yeah, we're down 1%. It's good that this strategy is playing out. We just weren't able to enter that trade and that happens in trading. But again, not many people are gonna talk about this because they're gonna only show the winners. But for me, I took a loss, negative 1%, absolutely fine. The analysis was correct. I just couldn't enter the market. There was no entry. It can be frustrating, but it's one of those things you've gotta be able to learn to deal with. There's still plenty of opportunity for the rest of the week. Um, so yeah, it's not a problem, but this is a real journey. This is what it's like up and down, you know, we're gonna have good, good days, bad days. So long as it was part of my plan, which it, the trade was, so currently we've had nine positions, nine trades. We've won four out of the nine. So not the best win rate, a bit lower than my normal. That's 44%. I usually try to aim to have at least sort of 50 minimum. So I need to work on my strike rate. So I'll probably look to only take high probability setups to ensure that we can improve that. Overall down negative 2.55%. So still a bit, bit of a way to go. Um, but yeah, we've managed risk. And I know the reason why, considering we've had a 44% win rate, we haven't actually had a big one to three winner or one to two winner. We've had small winners. That's because most of the trades that we've took have been pullback moves. They have, so they've been against the trend. So the targets are a lot shorter. So they tend to be one to 1.3s, one to five. Sometimes you might get a two to one, but they're a lot shorter term, quicker trades as opposed to what I also look for is trend continuation moves, but we haven't had too many of them this month. So. If we get some trend continuation moves going into next month, that allows us opportunity for a big, you know, one to three, one to four risk reward. I think there was a gold trade that set up that I did miss, which my error, that would have played out for 2.55%. It was this trade here. Um, you can see on the daily, pull back to the daily 50, bullish and gold thing, looking for the trend continuation move back up to the highs, which we did get. Perfect setup. However, I didn't enter so that's something I'll reflect on anyway. Um, but yeah, those types of trades are what, what I look for. Perfect setup, need to be executing them. And seeing these positions play out, like I said, and you're not involved in them and you take a 1% loss can affect you mentally, but you've got to look at the positives, understand trades are going to go off without you. Moves are going to happen without you. I need to stick to the process and be confident that the predictions are there. I just couldn't capitalize on those moves. So guys, no more trades taken this week. Um, so we finished the week negative with just that one loss but overall now we've come into august i looked at the, my data overall we're we're up one percent for the month so that's why you need to look at it monthly because i've been looking at my overall analytics on ftmo and i'm down now negative two percent i think on the overall challenge so we're still in drawdown but because we've had a negative month before and now this month we're positive in some ways going into this next week by seeing it as okay we had a positive month Although, yeah, I get we're still down, you come in with a bit more momentum. So I sat there and thought, actually, we had a positive month. Yes, it wasn't the best month. It's not by far not my best month. However, there's room for improvement. And also, we didn't end negative. So if we carry on momentum into next month and we finish positive next month, we could be on our way to getting the funded accounts. So it's good to look at it monthly because, like I said, I didn't notice that. When I saw on the, I'm looking at the analytics, I'm still in drawdown, I'm still down. Yes, we've managed our risk fantastically. We haven't blown the account. And yeah, I'm very confident going into next week because we had a positive month and we're up just over one percent on the account uh, for this month. It's actually given me more momentum and optimism going in. So you need to look at it like that. But yeah, if you guys get value from this video, you like this content, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. I'd appreciate it. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Um, I hope you have a good week. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.